the stars be with you. All right, I'd like to welcome my dear friend, longtime professional astrologer and fellow board member of San Diego Astrological Society, Simone Butler. Thank you for being here, Simone. Hey, Mel, I'm totally excited about our chat. Oh, me too. I have, uh, I have been talking with Simone for quite some time about our, my podcast endeavor and uh, what she's got going on as well. So Simone has been uh, my support with a lot of, um, of the development of what you see here today. So I'm so glad that you're able to join me finally on the podcast. Um, and especially for our topic today, which is Back to the Future. Mars retrograde 2018. Um, and so we have a lot to talk about with that. And I'm sure Simone's going to have some wonderful things to share. But before we get started, Simone, give us a little bit of info about yourself. Tell us a little bit of, um, you know, what you do, where you come from and who you are. Well, I was actually born and raised in San Diego, and I'm back living in my family home, which I inherited when my dad died about seven years ago. And I have totally feng shuied it and made it my own. And I have been practicing astrology since probably the early 80s. I was living in LA and it was such an incredibly fertile time, metaphysically speaking. And I, astrology just caught hold of me and it never let go. But I've been a journalist and a writer for years too. And I've written several books on astrology, one called Astro Feng Shui, in which I combine those two systems. And my most recent book is Moon Power. And it's all about ritual. All my books, all my books, both my books are ritual because ritual is like the core experience of my life. I do ritual on a daily basis, sometimes more than one ritual. It's all about connecting with and cooperating with the divine. Yes, beautiful. And I, well, and to toot Simone's horn. You got a divine presence yourself. You know, you're always we very well dressed um, and just, you know, quirky in a fun and beautiful way. And so you Thank have this you. goddess energy to you. Well, uh, I don't know if you see it, but I certainly do. So um, I'm so glad to have you here. And I can't wait to talk about Mars retrograde because, wow, it's going to be certainly a topic for this uh, summer. Um, so before we get in here real quick, let me just run down uh, when Mars retrograde is happening. Um, some specifics here. Let me, get, let me get down in my notes. Um, where are my notes? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already retrograding here. Okay, here we go. So Mars is going to go retrograde on June 26th and will be retrograde um, from Aquarius to Capricorn until August 27th. Uh, but we actually started at shadow period on May 12th is when we started to kind of feel the... Um, the energy starting to brew for this period, and it won't leave the shadow until October 8th, uh, which coincidentally is a few days after uh, Venus goes retrograde. It's <laughs> Mars good old friend Venus. Um, so once again, that's June 26th through August 27th that Mars will be retrograde uh, from nine degrees Aquarius uh, to 28 degrees Capricorn. Is that right, Simone? Yes, and I just want to mention that Mars is actually in its storm right now. Maybe people have heard of the shadow, which is a longer period, but the storm is when the planet is actually stuck on a particular degree. So Mars is now at the ninth degree, I think it's today or tomorrow, that um, we're recording this a week prior. prior. <laughs> and and the, the storm is the time when whatever planet it is, whether it's Mercury or Mars or whatever, where the planet can really act out because it's just sitting there doing nothing. It's not moving. It's not backward. It's not forward. And we are in that now uh, through about a week after the 26th. I love that you bring that up, Simone, because I was actually looking at, I get uh, NASA's uh, astronomy picture of the day automatically downloads to my iPad. And I think it was not yesterday, but the day before was a Mars picture. And because Mars is currently having storms, <laughs> dust <gasps> storms, great dust storms. So the fact oh! that you're bringing this up is kind of hilarious. Um, well, the, the picture was actually from early, uh, no, September, 2001. 
when uh, for like a three to four month period um, during the summer, <clears throat> Mars had an extreme dust storm that ended up changing the whole landscape of the planet. Um, and now it's having similar storms start to, you know, uh, rile up. Um, and so, of course, I go to look back. I'm like, 2001, was there a retrograde? What was going on? There was a retrograde. Uh, the time that they had the, the that crazy storm. And so now it's starting to rear up again. So how perfect well, is that? <laughs> can, I, can I just say something about that? Please. Often forget that what a retrograde means is that the planet is closer than usual to the Earth. Have you all been looking in the western sky at, in the evening? You can see Mars. It's really bright. It's really close to the Earth. And when the planet is retrograde or closer, its effects are magnified for better or for worse. So Mars energy is uh, no wonder, you know, they're running that, that news piece now talking about what was going on in 01 and... You know, so during the retrograde, Mars manifestations of all kinds are going to be happening. Yes, absolutely. And Lord knows what that will be, but I guess that's what we're going to talk about here today. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how, I, I mean, Simone, have you felt that shadow and that storm brewing at all? Like personally, have you encountered? Yes, I have. In fact, I told this story at our Astrological Society uh, the other night, and I'll tell it again because it's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. um, I always know when Mars is about to, is slowing down to go retrograde because I develop these ridiculous infatuations or attractions for completely wildly inappropriate men. And that's exactly what happened recently, about a week ago. I had to buy a new printer and the guy who sold me the printer was, oh my God, so cute half my age, but we had such a connection. Now, thankfully, I know. <laughs> now, then to, to follow up on these things, um, to actually pursue them under Mars retrograde, because I have indeed started two relationships over the years under Mars retrograde. And what I learned is these are men with baggage, serious baggage. So I say to you, all women out there, be very careful during this Mars retrograde period of starting up new relationships or even trying to get back together with a former partner, although that can work. I know you, you talked about a story in which a friend of uh, yours got back together with his former mate and or a person and they are married and happily living ever after. Well, it took a while for that to happen. So it definitely wasn't that Mars retrograde. But uh, if anything, that Mars retrograde had my friend or my person at that time leave me in order to entertain the idea or the feelings that he had for the, the person prior. Yeah. Um, and then many years go by and they were meant to be together. It didn't happen in that moment. But um, it initiated, you know, that storm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. So, so listen to Simone's advice, speaking from prior experience, um, which makes me think, Simone, do you think there's any, do you think, because we associate Venus retrograde, which we are going to have later this year in October, um, with relationships kind of coming back to us and maybe entertaining that. But do you think Mars is just as um, powerful for those types of scenarios to bring about? Well, for, for women or men who are attracted to men, yes, because Mars rules men, let us not forget, right? Yes. So men coming back into your life or the type of men that you used to be attracted to coming back around even in, the, in a new form, that's very Mars retrograde. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> and maybe even friends too, because since we're talking about Aquarius and the, Aqua yeah. you know, since we have Aquarius, uh, definitely representing some friendships or, you know, certain groups that we belong to or, you know, the tribe that we find ourselves in. Maybe there'll be some reconnection with, um, you know, folks we haven't been around for a long time in some Right. Way. Well, can I just bring up right here and now before we go any further, sure. that this is no ordinary retrograde of Mars because this one is... Um, engaging with the south node of the moon, which is a point of past lives. 
and also it's squaring Uranus, the ruler of Aquarius. So this is a very intense, rebellious, you know, people rising up type of a Mars retrograde, don't you think? I absolutely think so. And I, that's a great point to bring about um, and maybe a way we can kind of segue into talking about previous Mars retrogrades and especially in Aquarius. Um, yeah. Because I went back and started looking at, uh, you know, nerded out and went through all the Mars retrogrades until I actually got to an Aquarius one. Because that was actually kind of funny, Simone, is I was, you know, Mars goes retrograde one, what, every uh, little over two years? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was seeing every single sign go by in, in this, you know, long period of time. And it took me until 1971 to get back to the last time we had an Aquarius one. Um, and that was the only sign. That was the furthest sign away. I encountered every single sign up until then, uh, until I got to Aquarius. Um, and I noticed some very key significant events that happened in that time uh, that really spoke to those types of uh, rebelliousness or uprising or uprooting, um, you know, especially uh, if we're talking about more of a political sphere or, you know, kind of country uh, based. Um, there were lots of things going on near, during 1971 <laughs> that were, uh, it, it happened uh, July 10th through September 9th of 1971, um, which coincidentally enough, Simone was conjunct the North Node at that time. Oh, isn't that interesting? And now we're flipped. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's just a little side note. I don't. Well, have too I, much I looked at I looked at that period too. But you tell me what you found, and then I'll tell you if I found anything else. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I found a lot of things, and I'm not going to say some of the more depressing things because Mars. <laughs> you know, Mars can be a pretty brutal planet from you know, time to time. Um, I did find a couple of military coups, you know, certain uh, countries, uh, you know, helping to uplift themselves from whatever oppressive government or regime they had going on. Um, like, uh, in, I think Sudan was one of them. Um, there was another one in particular uh, that I can't see right now, but um, there were a couple of countries that proclaimed independence from Britain. I think it was uh, Bahrain and Qatar over in the Middle East had claimed independence from Britain after 110 years of rule. Wow. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, one, of the, one of the main things um, that they ended up making a movie about and everything was the Attica Prison Rebellion. Do you right. remember that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, granted, this was before, uh, you know, I was here on this planet, but... Um, there's a lot of documentation about stuff like this. They made a movie on it. I think it's called it's called Attica, where there was a bunch of prisoners that uh, rioted um, for a four day period uh, in New York uh, because of the conditions, the the unhumane conditions that they lived in, and they were basically starving. And it was clearly a human rights itch issue. Um, and the prisoners weren't going to take it anymore. And it did not end well, <laughs> as yeah. we well know. Um, but once again, we're talking about Aquarius. We're talking about that rebellion, that uprising, um, if, and especially for rights and what people deserve. Um, and I have a couple things here, but I want to hear what you have, uh, Simone, okay. on your plate. Well, the China trade embargo was lifted. That was one of the points in Nixon's favor. <laughs> Although people were rioting in the streets at that time because of the Vietnam War, of course, mm -hmm. were being withdrawn. Not all. It didn't fully end in 71, but it was, it was a hot issue. The Pentagon Papers were published. Mm. Maybe um, you saw that uh, movie recently, the one with Meryl Streep and Tom, Tom Hanks, where they, I for, I'm blanking on the name of the movie, but it was, oh, The, the Post. The Post. That really depicts that whole situation. It was highly Mars retrograde in nature. The voting age was lowered from 21 to 18 during that Mars. Oh. Retrograde. And there were two major airline crashes. I saw that. Yeah, Mars is in an air sign retrograde. Where, uh, Aquarius rules flying. It rules the, uh, you know, literally the air. Aquarius and Gemini both. Are connected to um, the air so it's certainly possible we may have things like that going on again I hope not 
Yeah. And I mean, to be honest, we've had some issues with that recently. I know Southwest Airlines in particular has had a couple, um, uh, I think it was the day that the sun conjunct Uranus um, back in April is when they had that uh, emergency landing where the, the window cracked open and the poor girl got sucked into the... Why? Uh, yeah, and I was like, oh, that's a completely Uranian event. <laughs> uh, you know, just random, you know, and that's never really, that's never happened to them. And then there was, they had to ground a flight like a week later because they had a crack in a window. Um, well, we don't want to say... You know, yes freaking out who's planning to travel during the Mars retrograde. We don't want to say that you shouldn't travel. However, I will say the last week of July is a time when I would really recommend you not travel during the Mars retrograde. And that's because we were talking about this earlier. It's a lunar eclipse. Uh, the retrograde Mars op opposes the sun. Mercury goes retrograde. All of this stuff, and the lunar eclipse conjuncts the Mars and the South Node. So this is all from uh, July 25th through the 27th to the 28th. So, and even the 29th. Let's just give a whole like yeah. little five day. Yeah, no, <laughs> just basically the last really 10 days or whatever of the month. Because if, if gnarly events were going to happen, that's probably the, the time. time. Yeah. And one of, I was, um, noting that the the mountain astrologer, our favorite astrology magazine, or at least mine, uh, their forecaster was writing about that that eclipse and saying that things were going to change irrevocably, and that your future may not even go in the, the same direction that you thought it was going to go after that eclipse, which was kind of like whoa, you know, because this is a a person who's usually extremely upbeat. Um, which I also try to be. I, the last thing we want to do is instill fear in people. Um, but, you know, your, your life going in a different direction could be a good thing. Yes. To be something, you know, really terrible. Well, yeah, because I mean, especially during that time when Mars is going to be opposing the sun and really with any Mars retrograde, um, and I learned this from Adam Gainsburg's class at UAC when he was talking about the cycles of Mars, uh, anytime th that Mars opposes the sun, Mars is going to be retrograde because that is part of the retrograde cycle as it gets far enough away from the sun um, and close to the earth, like you were saying, yeah. uh, it, it, that it's when it has its opposition with the sun, every time it's retrograde. Um, and if we're thinking about Mars and what, how it propels us into motion and action and our desires, our motivations, um, then being uh, opposed by the sun, which, you know, is, you know, that lifeline, that purpose. And so we get to look at those two, two things from a bird's eye view. So it doesn't surprise me, especially in the sign of uh, Aquarius, which is very future oriented and planning for what is to come, that perhaps maybe once we get that uh, view from either side of positions, that we will maybe be like, oh, I'm going to choose or make a decision to maybe do this instead now that I'm able to see my life in more of a clearer way. And then with that lunar eclipse, uh, conjunct the south node perfectly. If we think of the south node as a funnel, you know, take, you know, that we can release through if we use it uh, correctly rather than suck down into it. <laughs> um, perhaps that could be the defining moment as well uh, for that. Well, and it could be also the defining moment for the whole situation right now with the immigrant children being mm. detained, because that's likely to continue being a hotbed of controversy as it already is. And let's not forget, Mars is in an air sign, so everybody's chit-chatting away and, and really fuming at the, at the ears or whatever <laughs> over this situation, and rightfully so. Yeah. And the, the and now that we're moving into the Cancerian time frame, which is all about family and home and children and all of that, these are things and people are starting to protest. And, you know, there it, it is entirely possible that um, some laws might even be enacted or because Mars will retrograde back to join both Saturn and Pluto while in in Capricorn while it's retrograde. So 
that can be either law, like martial law even, or it can be people demanding that certain laws be enforced or that other laws or people in government might uh, need to be ousted. So there's got to be, there's going to be people's inner warriors are going to be coming out to the max. But the important thing is that we need to work with this Mars energy in a healthy way as much as possible, because Mars is all about anger and righteous indignation, but it's really in its purest form. Yes, it's the God of war, but it's also just about action. It's, and when Mars, of all the planets, is retrograde, I think it's, it's a frustrating time because Mars wants to move and it can't really move forward during the retrograde. So if, like, if you don't have a good relationship with your Mars, let's say your Mars is in the 12th house or your Mars is in Libra or like me, your Mars is opposite Chiron. That's a whole other story. But <laughs> there are certain... And I'm getting in touch with that. And it's actually really great. And I'm healing some, some really, if we had more time, I'd tell you uh, what I'm healing that is so amazing already under this Mars retrograde. But that's the idea. Go back to the past and heal any old frustrations, incompletions, things you're still angry about. And don't let that stuff just faster because it'll get triggered under this Mars retrograde and you could end up, you know, inciting a riot, whether in your own home or, you know, on the street, if you're just going off like crazy without having dealt with your own Mars issues. Mm, yes. And that is a good point. And maybe that is the blessing in disguise with it being an Aquarius is that there is that air and that sense of detachment that maybe can come to help us look at, uh, you know, a new way of looking at some of the uh, old pain or trauma that we might have worked through too, because Aquarius is also a sign that is um, sometimes connected with the idea of, of trauma uh, in people's lives. I know uh, I remember Deborah Parker yeah. did a yeah. talk on that a while mm -hmm. back. Um, and it, well, it's interesting too, Simone, if I think about, I know you mentioned, uh, Nixon earlier for a second, when we were talking about the 1971 Mars retrograde in Aquarius. And that was also the time during that Mars retrograde, uh, that he started to do, uh, it was the first, um, uh, it was the first time the White House plumbers were, were used, uh, which started the whole Watergate thing, all the stuff that, you know, so the kind of the first actions that initiated what ended up being Watergate, this uh, behind the scenes type of uh, verse of action, uh, which ended up really, you know, crumbling and falling apart for, for him, uh, began under this, that Mars retrograde during that time. So even though it's not necessarily happening during the actual time of Mars retrograde, maybe some actions that are taken now and especially, especially subversively, uh, if we're like doing something, you know, on the low, on the down low or, or political wise, you know, our world sphere, um, especially since we have a very Martian president who likes to take things into his own hands. I'm just wondering if certain things, especially with what you were saying with the, the, what, the immigration issue that's hot right now and the fact that families are being separated from one another, if some things that are going on behind the scenes during this time might not eventually come out in the open to not be very, um, yeah. Well, mm. our, our current president um, actually has the exact Mars South Node conjunction in his solar return chart. His birthday what the 14th of june i think uh, yeah, uh i can't 14th remember it was june. very recently mm -hmm. right yeah and that was when the mars south node conjunction was exact and so you know traditionally mars conjunct the south node is associated with war on some level although aquarius being an air sign certainly it's a it could be a a twitter war right yeah <laughs> A war of words, a war of, but, you know, he's moved beyond words now and he's, he's, you know, doing things, taking actions that are pissing a lot of people off. And so if this is going to continue, I mean, the solar return chart lasts for a year. So he's in this extremely Mars, uh, he's got Mars on his ascendant mm -hmm. chart anyway in Leo. So he is... He's, you know, a spitfire and even more so. And with the South Node 
uh, involved, you know, this is almost like in a carrying forth of past life energies. And as much as I know, some, there, I read that 30% of the population is behind him no matter what he does. It's almost like a cult, you know, they, yeah. it, he's our man and we're going to go with him. But for those of us who don't feel that way um, about it, it's we can, one thing we need to realize is that he is here on the world stage for a reason. He's inciting um, something that obviously needed to happen or it wouldn't be happening. Yeah, I, to I totally agree with that. Um, and if we are thinking about, you know, this big, big hot topic issue with the whole immigration and, you know, people being separated from their families, one of the more negative sides of Aquarius can be uh, alienation or being exiled in some way. And uh -huh. so I hear that topic is coming up as well uh, for those people. Um, so I, yeah, I, it breaks my heart. It's just the saddest thing. And I can't believe I can't believe our country is doing that. <laughs> well, you know, that reminds me, too, of the, the two high-profile suicides that we just had. Oh, yeah. And it, talk about alienation and Mars, you know, being in Aquarius. And so what is the positive use of Aquarius detachment? That's what we need to look at because it's it doesn't have to be about alienation and feeling like you're all alone or you have no options left, right? Mm -hmm. How do you find the positive option? That is a good question. And I think these are the types of things that might come up on a more, in a more lighter uh, tone, you know, when we go back uh, with Mars retrograde and Aquarius. Um, you know, Aquarius is about, once again, that finding your tribe and belonging in some way and finding the right yeah. groups and friendships that are right yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. And so perhaps um, maybe this is the time if we find ourselves maybe distancing from old, friend, or old friends uh, to reassess maybe where we are into today with our today's interests and desires and what we're motivated to do and maybe rethinking who we align ourselves with. Um, mm -hmm. Just, you know, playing it out. Uh, and especially once again, like I was saying earlier, you know, having uh, those old tribes come back in maybe to give us even perspective of how far we've grown uh, since we've had those people in our lives to some extent. Um, so, you know, that's, that might be a useful way for this Mars retrograde is to really, you know, go in and get in touch with who you, what sphere you now belong in and, uh, you know, who you might want to align with, uh, with your tribe going forward. Or go back to a group or a community that you used to belong to and reconnect with them. You know, if you've fallen out and you've been too busy or whatever, I think going back to things and all Mars things like activities, you know, I went, I finally got back to the pool and I'm working out in the pool again and it feels so great. I'm so happy, but it took Mars going retrograde uh, for me to actually do that. So think about what physical activities that you uh, are really missing and wanting to get back to. And, and also bear in mind that when Mars is slowing down, what it's really trying to do, I think, is bring us into the present moment, which mm. is the only place where change can really happen. And most of us in this culture, we are not interested in the present moment. We're either stuck in the past with sadness and depression, or we are forging into the future with plans and worry and, and you know, restless movement. But Mars doesn't favor that. It retrograde, it, it favors centering in yourself to the now moment, to the present moment. And the more you can do that, that's how you cultivate your, your inner warrior, I think. And that's a very good point, Simone, because one of the things that Mars retrograde is a lot of times associated with is frustration, <laughs> right? And so like you were saying, if we're still living in the past in a lot of ways, or we're just trying to rush into the future, which could be a, a thing with Aquarius too, because yes. Aquarius is very much forward thinking and, and future oriented. Um, but I think you're absolutely right about the need to be in the present, especially with a retrograde, because things just aren't going forward in the motion that we are using used to. Yes. Uh, so unless we take that time. Well, and it's wise to not try to launch new things because Mars rules motion, right? And when it's not 
moving or it's moving backward, sure, you can go back to things from the past or you can continue slowly but surely with things that you've already set into motion and tweak them and refine them. But like with Mercury retrograde, it's somewhat similar because it's like, we don't want to push the river here. We don't want to force anything to happen. And that's where the frustration and the anger comes in. And that is a great point, uh, Simone, and especially with the storm that you were just mentioning earlier, because I had uh, two uh, consultations in the last two days where I encountered um, two ladies <laughs> who are both having issues with their, their work. Um, and they, you know, they'd been there for a long time and they were just becoming frustrated and they were like feeling urged to move in that moment. And, you know, I did the readings uh, and I, it was, there were tarot consultations and each one was, you know, basically like waited out, you know, not, not now, you know, but this is the time when those frustrations can come up and much like Mercury retrograde, like you were saying, there might be that, you know, feeling like, oh, we got to move now. We got to do it. There's no, there's not enough time. I got to, you know, and that's where that frustration and that kind of pent up energy can lie. So that's a great point, Simone. Uh, yeah. Take it into consideration if you're feeling like you got to move right now. And just cool your jets. <laughs> Even if you have to like write that phrase down and put it up as your screensaver or put it up on your bathroom wall or some place where you're going to see it because that really, because jets is kind of a Martian. Yeah. Well, and we were talking about the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the phrase that came to me to really boil down the Mars retrograde. No, oh, I love it. Um, and well, while we're talking about Mercury uh, and how its retrograde cycles can kind of have similar, um, just that oomph to do or, you know, that frustration, we actually are going to have Mercury going retrograde in Leo within that Mars retrograde. Um, and so, we, so we'll basically have two personal planets at the same time, uh, you know, going apparently backwards. Um, so any, any thoughts on that, Simone? Other, you know? It's not just Mercury and Mars. It's also um, some of the outer planets, Neptune, Pluto, Uranus goes retrograde, maybe not till August, but, and then Venus. I mean, literally most of the planets or more than half of them are going to be retrograde at the same time, which I've heard some people refer to that as a retrograde storm. And uh, I believe it was Ariel Gutman was saying that uh, the last time we had that many planets retrograde at the same time was um, in the 80s, the late 80s when the Berlin Wall fell. Mm. So the, uh, the early 40s at the start of World War II. And she was saying, and I have to agree, that, you know, it's like, well, why would it be such a, a difficult time with that many retrograde planets? Well, it's because retrograde planets want us to go within. They want us to finish up the past and deal with our, you know, whatever we haven't dealt with. And if it's just one retrograde or two retrogrades at the same time, you, you know, it's not as difficult to do that. But when, you know, a huge pile of retrogrades, five or six of them, are happening at the same time, it's overwhelming sometimes because there's so much inner work to do. And if we're not inclined to do inner work in the first place, then we can really get ourselves in a pickle. Yeah. Mercury and Mars being inner planets and, and also ruling a lot like Mars rules people with strong Aries and Scorpio in their chart, uh, like the sun rising, whatever. And Mercury rules people with strong uh, Gemini and Virgo in their chart. So that's a lot of folks. And because they're inner planets, they can have, I think, more of a personal effect on our lives than maybe the outer planet retrogrades do, unless the outer planet happens to be, you know, sitting on your sun or whatever you know or the fact that you know we were talking about earlier with mars squaring uranus and its cycle here and so here we have this mars retrograde then uh interacting with um that outer planet which i don't think uranus will be ret retrograde during that time i think it waits until 
Uh, Uranus goes retrograde August 7th. So it will go, it, yeah. it'll go retrograde um, uh, about seven days after it makes that square to Mars. So basically we had uh, Mars originally squared Uranus at 29 degrees Capricorn and Uranus at 29 degrees Aries during our uh, Taurus new moon back on May 16th which mm -hmm. if anybody remembers, that was uh, the start of, uh, I was already in a cycle where I was going, you know, going, 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 and I was looking for some relief. And then I remember talking to you, Simone, and I looked at the new moon chart for our Taurus new moon in mid-May, and I was like, oh no, Mars square Uranus. And, it, you know, things just haven't let up. There has been a lot of challenges, a lot of great, you know, having to be um, propelled after, out of my own comfort zone in many ways. Um, and so I'm wondering how this is going to play out as Mars squares Uranus again on August 1st during its retrograde. Um, and then again on September 18th when Mars will be direct, still in its shadow phase, but at that point Uranus will then be retrograde. So and August, in, yeah, go ahead. Well, August 1st, of course, is contained within that window we were just talking about that starts July 25th with the retrograde Mercury and continues through, you know, the um, uh, lunar eclipse. And then, so we really do have to say, at least through the 1st of August, to just chill as best as you can. Lunar eclipses can, you know, especially I find I'm a Cancer, you're a Cancer, yep. <laughs> by the moon, and... I don't know if you find this, but I often find that under when the when my ruling planet is being eclipsed, it's a very exhausting, very it, it's a time when I can feel extremely drained. And you gotta take really good care of yourself during that time. But there's one other thing I wanted to mention before I forget. Whenever we, we look at a particular major planetary event like Mars going retrograde on June 26th, we cast a chart for it and we see what else is going on. And therefore, that other thing, which in this case happens to be retrograde Saturn opposing the sun exactly on that day, that too is going to color the entire retrograde period. And I mean, retrograde Saturn is kind of playing out as not a very, um, you know, positive governmental influence at the moment because Saturn, of course, is our ruling um, folks. And the opposition to the sun can be very frustrating. It's like you can't move and you can't have an influence in it. And, and so therefore that contributes to the frustration as much as the Mars retrograde does. Mm, and that's a very good point, Simone, because, and why that Saturn is so strong, because yeah, it's uh, talking about those people that are in authority and that power, and it's in Capricorn where it's the most powerful. So it's got an upper edge right now. And so basically this week, um, and what I've outlined prior in the, the uh, broadcast, uh, on the podcast, is basically, so we have Mars going retrograde on Tuesday 26th then Saturn uh, and the sun opposing each other on the 27th and then our full moon in Capricorn that same day. Um, and in traditional astrology, uh, the moon in Capricorn, and speaking as someone with the moon in Capricorn, it's what is known as detriment. Um, and so that moon, and the moon represents people in general, um, are not in such a great place. So here we have the moon going to be conjuncting Saturn, which is very much in a good place. And so I'm wondering if just some things this week might start to obviously foreshadow some of the um, incidences that we're going to encounter, especially on the more world sphere, um, with those influences being stronger than we'd like them to be, at least those people in power to some extent. Just thoughts. <laughs> yeah, and again, we don't want to paint a picture yes. like a, an incredibly dark period for humanity. I actually think the all the the Aquarius and the square from Uranus to Mars, that those energies are very useful. They're helpful because they help, they inspire us to rise up and to fight against, you know, uh, injustice and all that repressive retrograde Saturn strong in its own sign, you know, that is, they're trying to enact. And as long as we do it in a wise way without 
you know, uh, getting ourselves killed in the process, I think that it can actually, it, it's, it's an intense time, but I do think we can, and in our own lives, we can throw off the shackles of things that have, um, you know, been a source of shame or a source of uh, pain from the past. And so take us, if you know where uh, late Capricorn to nine degree Aquarius is located in your chart, what house or houses that is, look at that area because Mars is acting like an outer planet right now in its effects. It's stronger than usual, being close to the earth, being retrograde. It is treading very slowly, if at all, you know, move, not hardly moving in those areas. So those are the areas of your life. And if you have any planets around those degrees, oh my goodness, it is calling you forth to really get your act together and to shed old stuff that you no longer need. And that's the South Node conjunction too. Mm. Yeah, that's a great point, Simone. Yeah, we, do, we definitely don't want to scare people. And I'll play to your point about how this can be used um, to help uh, rise up in a way. Um, because uh, my last example for 1971 Aquarius re uh, Mars retrograde is that is when George Harrison did his concert for Bangladesh in new york and uh that was a huge you know um fundraising awareness um you know gathering very much aquarius you know many people came it was for a, a cause to help uh, get aid and relief to the people in bangladesh that were going through um some serious uh, political issues and they were having genocide in their country and they're they're trying to gain independence once again gaining this independence in some way. And so here George Harrison was able to use his power and his influence, um, which we can use some Saturn type of energy there too, if Saturn's really strong, like authority doesn't just have to be the people uh, in power that we're not so crazy about. It can be people that have authority in other way, uh, issues, ways that they can bring that to the scale. So maybe there's going to be someone out there like George Harrison that helps to bring awareness to all these issues that are coming about and to get that relief and aid and have people come together and feel more like a community um, and involved in these issues that we're currently engaged in. I love that idea. So we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> not just one person, but a group of people, you know? in true Aquarius style, because it's, it takes more than one person. It takes many to make change happen. Um, yeah. So, yeah. All right, Simone. So before we wrap up here, uh, and we'll, we'll kind of keep this on the light side, uh, any tips to work with the retrograde energy, or do you have any ritual ideas or any, not to put you on the spot, but whatever you think could help people um, during this period? Well, I've already stated and I will restate the fact of going back to activities and physical activities that your body loves, whether it's dancing or working out in the pool or anything like that, because you want to make your Mars happy. Because even though maybe the retrograde Mars is not affecting your natal Mars by transit, still all Mars issues are, are up. And especially Mars retrogrades uh, or Mars Aquarius, which also might mean going back to uh, be with friends, be with family, be with people that maybe you've lost touch with and rebond with those people. So think in terms of going back to things that you've gotten away from that have been enormously um, you know, positive and have made you feel happy and also work on, on healing old issues. Mars is, I'm just going to say very briefly, Mars is um, uh, on my Chiron in the ninth house. And I had a major issue many years ago with uh, where I had to drop, I thought I had to drop out of college. I won't go into it, but I didn't finish. I went four years and I never got that diploma. And I've, it's been a source of shame. So I actually just made, um, I'll show it to you. I just made myself a diploma. I don't know if you can see it. Oh my gosh, I love it. I know, so there's a ritual. I literally did something. I printed it off the internet on really beautiful paper and I wrote in uh, my name and uh, the course is from the 
uh, completed the course of the University of Life. <laughs> and I put today's date and it's just, I'm going to hang it up in the fame area of my house where you want to put certificates. So whatever is calling you for completion, take a tangible step like that to make yourself feel like I've completed this and I don't have to be ashamed of it or angry about it. Maybe you're, you've been holding on to anger about a relationship, you know, take something that symbolizes that and bury it in the ground and light a, a candle and, and, you know, just release it. So that's all that comes to mind. I love that Simone so much and I can relate to you. I was in <laughs> I was in a college program where I was getting my bachelor's and masters at the same time in elementary education. I had two semesters to go. I dropped out, moved to California, never finished and there, it does hang over me. So I, I mean, I love the way you presented that and that story, but it, it really speaks to me <laughs> as, as an example. I love it. Um, so, okay, well, I'm sure we've, we've talked many things Mars retrograde, many examples. We're going to stay on the lighter side, but just know, you know, this is a world where anything can happen. But as long as we proceed in a positive and enlightened uh, way, um, we can get the best out of life. So, uh, Simone, I know you have some offerings to share with people. So tell them how they can find you and what you got going on. Well, my latest project that I launched a couple of months ago is called Simone Says. And I've always wanted to have a show or a gossip column. I'm a former fashion editor uh, called Simone Says, in which I dish the dirt. And so this is a weekly show on Patreon, which you also have a show on Patreon, yes. And it is a, uh, an opportunity for people to find out what's going on that week. And then there is a forecast part that goes into everybody's personal sign and gives tips and how to deal with the energies. And so it's like, it's kind of the culmination of my career to date and I'm having fun with it. And uh, so that's at um, patreon.com slash Simone Butler. Yes, and I am, a, I am a patron of Simone's and I love the content. And so you do a weekly video, um, kind of like I do, but in, different, in a different way. She has a, um, a slideshow she uses. She always has fun graphics. Uh, you also do a weekly um, uh, horoscope for each sign. That is yeah. part of the whole thing. And on top of that, which is the whole reason I'm wearing my, my red today, for since we're recording on Mars Day about Mars, <laughs> Um, is you get a, a everyday enchantment ebook, right? Is that uh, part of the thing? And so you yeah. learn what to wear based on uh, the days of the week, and it's fascinating. Yeah, we're both wearing red on Mars Day because we happen to be recording this on a Tuesday, and it really does make a difference when you're aligning yourself with the energy of the planetary god that rules a particular day. It's just one of many, many ways to align yourself with spirit, which the planets to me are definitely an emissary of that. But I also wanted to say that my website is astroalchemy.com and I blog there twice a month and post other things. And so that's uh, something free that you can sign up for if you're so inclined. Uh, and let's not forget your Instagram where you are religiously oh, every day doing your thing. Yes! Thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, I am really having fun posting every day on Instagram about whatever the astro energy for the day is. And I keep those really simple because there's a lot of folks that get that that don't know astrology at all. And then it also goes to my Astro Alchemy Facebook page. So you can find it at Simone.MoonPower at uh, Instagram or just Astro Alchemy Facebook page. Yes, and I will have all that information on my um, uh, within this uh, podcast and on my blog post as well, just in case you don't pick that up and you want to connect with Simone. Um, so, all right, wonderful. Well, where can you find me? Well, you can find me um, at energeticprinciples.com and also on Instagram and Facebook at Energetic Principles. Um, and right now, I currently am kind of, I'm 
I'm excited to embrace this Mars retrograde and I've just been so busy lately. And so I don't have anything going on really <laughs> uh, right now. And I, that is going to be okay with me, but I am always doing updates online um, with my daily astro alerts. And of course I have the podcast and my tarot subscription on Patreon. So if you're interested in finding me on Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com backslash energetic principles. Um, and just a quick reminder, if you like what you hear today and you want to, uh, you know, share the good word, tell a friend, you know, uh, get it out there. Um, and let people know that, uh, people like me and Simone are talking about these things that we can help uh, prep people for the energy of the moment. Um, and if you feel so inclined to review, you can do so on iTunes. Um, so, all right, everyone. Well, I'm, one, I'm wishing you a fabulous week, and I'm also wishing you a fabulous Mars retrograde, right, Simone? We're going to hope yeah. for the best here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, all right, as always, uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and may the stars be with you. Bye bye.